So in this video, I'll show you how we automated and productized an entire newsletter agency with NADN and Airtable. Now, anyone can throw in a quick prompt in ChatGPT or copy and paste an NADN template and get a newsletter in 30 seconds. But getting an actual high quality newsletter with real stories, personality, and a unique voice for each brand, that's the hard part. So in this video, I'll show you a demo of the system from onboarding to idea generation to human-like newsletters, show you the context engineering process we follow to automate high quality content processes like these, and lastly, how we packaged and productized it with NADN and Airtable. If you don't know me yet, I'm Ben. I run my own AI business where we sell AI SEO, content, ad, and recruiting systems to businesses and agencies. I also run a community where I help founders, business owners, and professionals build and sell AI automations themselves. Now, although it might look simple, a lot of work went into actually building this. Uh, it's easy and fast to spin up a quick uh, newsletter automation that produces some generic newsletter, but getting really high quality ones is where you're gonna spend a lot more time in engineering a tool or solution. So if you're interested in uh, adopting the solution, you can also check out the link in the description below and uh, book a call with us. Now we have four sections in the tool. The first one is the onboarding where we can set up newsletter strategies for multiple companies or brands. Uh, then second, we can generate insights or ideas either automatically by the system, manually, or by repurposing uh, a YouTube link or any other link. Then we can uh, write newsletters from the ideas or insights and also generate images. And then we can push it to any of the major uh, email marketing platforms. So for the example here, I've set up two different ones for myself here with two different uh, tone of voices to show you how it can adapt and mimic the tone of voice of a specific personal brand very, very well. So in this first section, uh, the onboarding, it's really the place that allows us to get these high quality and brand aligned and sort of relevant newsletters for specific business. And what we're doing here is essentially onboarding, what a traditional agency would do, onboarding, right? And we're gathering context. So you can see here, we have the name, uh, a uh, uh, what we do. I already filled it out here for myself, right? What the company does or the person does who this is for, of course, who the newsletter is for. Then we can add some extra instructions if we want, for example, if we want to have a specific CTA, et cetera. We can add in a word limit. And here we also have user's context. Now this is optional, but if this newsletter comes from someone specifically, not a, not a company, but from a person like me, then this is really good to fill out. And this is really to get the personal background story, both professional and uh, personal from the user, which we can then use uh, inside of the newsletter writing, right? So here we have a quick doc um, that I recommend people to fill out to cover everything in the personal background story, uh, which can then be fed into the system, right? So the way I generally like to do it is use Whisperflow so I can talk and just answer all of these questions uh, quickly. But basically I've already done it here, right? So I have a long background story on me. And then here we have the most important piece uh, that should be filled out, which are the newsletter references. Now, the system is going to mimic the tone of voice and style of these references. Now, the cool thing in this system is we can put in any newsletter from other creators, even if they're not related to our industry, and it will really mimic their tone of voice and style, even though it will write it for your target audience and in, in your brand, right? So in this case, I fed it in with uh, examples of Justin Welsh a famous newsletter guy and here you can just upload any pdf so you can just download it from email and upload it uh, here the ones you like and i did the same one here uh, uh basically the same setup but with a different newsletter from liam otley just to show you that it will generate very different uh tone of voice and it will really mimic the style of each of these creators uh, because liam and and justin have very different uh styles so you'll see that in a second and then we have the reference images because it can also generate images. So if we have any styling, et cetera, you can add that in here and then you can decide the, the integration platform. Now from here, the next step is to generate a strategy. Now, if I click here, the system will start generating a newsletter strategy and a writing framework based on the context we gave it on the company. So that's the first part of our automation here in the backend in NADN. First, it will parse the PDFs, right? Then it will write a newsletter strategy and a writing framework. Now, these two reports are going to be really important when we're generating ideas and the newsletter and also to mimic the tone of voice. So if I go back here, we got the newsletter strategy right now. So you can see in the strategy, we have a messaging and positioning. So we cover the target audience, the value proposition, right? The narrative, the pain points of our target audience, right? AI moves so fast, so I don't know where to start. Imposter syndrome, I'm not technical enough to build with AI, etc. More info and insights about the customer and uh, we generate some content pillars. And of course, again, we have human in the loop here, so we can adjust this. And then second, we have a writing framework. So this is a very detailed overview of the, the, the writing style of the references we put in. So you can see structural uh, formula, right? Who quit unexpected truth? Uh, so Ben's adaptation in this case, language patterns, paragraph strategy, uh, vulnerability deployment, trust building, 
right? The exact phrases that he likes to use, etc. right? So I'll do it quickly for the other one too. And now from here, we can go to generate insights. So there are basically three ways we can generate insights or ideas we can write newsletters on later. Uh, the first one is by just putting in an insight yourself here. Uh, this is what I tend to do or sometimes do. It's just, again, use whisper flow whenever I have an insight and generate ideas from there. The second is by sharing a link. We can either share a YouTube link or a blog link or etc. Now, again, it, this can be something that is not related to your industry, etc. It already has context on your target audience, on your brand, etc. So it'll create insights and ideas that will, will be relevant for your target audience. Right. And the third way is let the system do it automatically. So in that case, we don't have to select anything. So I can just click here on gen generate ideas. I'll do it for both. And now the system in the back end will generate ideas automatically, which is the next part of the flow. The ideas, of course, are generated according to the context uh, before. So if I go back, now I can go here and here we get all the new ideas. So you can see you don't need to understand neural networks. The highest paid AI consultants I know can't code, right? So we get all the ideas for the different brands here. So I generated for both here. So most agencies burn 15 hours a week on client reporting. It can be automated with NNN. So you can see it already has context on what I do, right? Uh, the gap between freelancers stuck at 5k a month and agency hitting 100k MR wasn't technical ability, but a shift from selling AI features to selling outcomes. This is a good one. So for example, from here, I, I like this, this insight. I can just go here on generate content and now we'll start generating the, the actual newsletter. Besides this, I can also add in YouTube links, blog links, uh, or manual insights on the difference between this one and the one before us. Here, we'll actually write the newsletter out of it right away instead of generating uh, ideas or insights out of it. So let me just show you an example, um, the same example for both ones so we can compare the tone of voices and see that it really does it differently according to the references we give it. So let's just pass in a YouTube link. I'll call it YouTube link one. We pass in a random YouTube link. Let's do this one. Just paste that in here. We click source type YouTube and we generate the content. Now I'll do the same one for the other one. So we can see the difference. Now in the meantime, uh, the other one is done. So we can see and check the result here. So you can see this one is based on Liam Otley style, right? And it starts with this, August 28th, 2025, Sao Paulo, Brazil is where I live. Hey there, Ben here. I'm writing this for my apartment, post-workout, still dripping from the sauna. The sauna regulars were asking me about AI again today. Ben, should we be worried about our jobs? What's the next big AI tool? How do I learn this stuff? And I realized while explaining it for the hundredth time, every, everyone's asking the wrong questions. So this took it from Liam's style, which always starts almost always with a personal backstory. So if I show an example of Liam, you can see here, hey there, Liam, I was in Turkey until last week, Monday morning, lying in bed, staring at the ceiling. So you can see very similar style also for the introduction. And it really mimicked that well, but of course it used my personal stories. It knows I take regular saunas, right? So it takes that as a personal backstory uh, when it's starting the newsletter. You can also see as these short, punchy sentences style, right? Lots of questions, short sentences, etc., which you really took uh, uh, from his reference. Let's read it a little bit more. So six months ago, I was stuck at the same revenue. Then I had a painful conversation with a prospect that changed everything. I don't give a fuck about your AI tools. So this, again, this is the style of Liam, right? He, he does this profanity thing sometimes. Here we go, right? Fuck it. Let's do it. Right. So it really mimics that tone of voice, but of course it uses it. And, and according to my context and my target audience, and the story is still based on the insight, right? The shift that nobody talks about before, after, etc. But I want to show you an example of the YouTube link, which is now generated to see the difference in styles between the two references, right? Again, this one is from Liam's re references. And again, it starts here with a personal backstory. It's 6.47 a.m. I'm sitting in my apartment watching the Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo skyline wake up. Just finished my morning gym session, ice bath done, coffee brewing. Again, took it from my personal context. And I keep thinking about this conversation I had with an old friend yesterday who runs a marketing agency. 20 employees, decent revenue that works. He spent the entire 25 minutes complaining about margins, hiring headaches, and clients demanding faster results for less money. Classic agency problems. Then he asked me what I, I told him, we just crossed hundred K MR delivering SEO services. Again, got that context. His jaw literally dropped eight people. How is it even possible? So here it goes into the content of my YouTube video, but really just makes a personal story out of it, right? Opportunity one, if you've seen my video, this is exactly what it covers. 
the three stage transformation. So this is really 90% there. Of course, it's very hard to get them 100% there. But if this is your tone of voice, it, it does an amazing job. But if we look now look at the one from Justin Welsh here, you see that the style is very different, right? Justin Welsh, if you uh, have seen his, his newsletters, it's a lot more nuanced. It's not as punchy or attention grabbing maybe as, as Liam. It's a lot more nuanced, a lot more balanced. It's, it's it's more writing while Liam's is more conversational so you can see he also likes to start with a personal backstory last week I had lunch with a successful CEO as we were eating our appetizer salads I started digging into a story I don't think I know enough to build a business that big after I said it he smiled leaned across the table and said something that surprised me so a lot more uh you know nuanced and, and, and balanced writing so if we look at ours right now I had a coffee with an agency owner last week was doing drowning in client work 20 employees barely breaking even working weekends just to keep up classic service business problems then I showed him what we're doing with our SEO service we're handling triple the clients with the third amount of staff running at margins he didn't believe were possible his response was exactly what I expected but I'm not technical enough to build AI systems so again took that from the pain points etc where you can see the style here is completely different than the one I, I previously generated, but still talks to my target audience, uses my personal backstory and covers what I said in that video, right? And you can even see it in the call to action, ready to transform your knowledge. This is the type of call, call to action he uses, right? And if we look at Liam's, right? This is the type of call to action he generally uses, right? The PS. So really does a good job mimicking that, that tone of voice in my experience. And then from here, what we can do is generate the subject lines. So we'll generate three subject lines, All right? And then we can choose once we get the three and we choose, we can then uh, push to the newsletter platform. And lastly, we can also generate images for this newsletter. So if I click here, the, the generated uh, images will be generated here. Right, so you can see I actually followed my style a lot. It's not perfect yet, these images, but really this is 95% of the way there and really follows my style, even copies my picture, my name, etc., and tries to uh, make sort of an infographic which you can then use inside of the newsletter. From there, you can then push it. So you can see this one was generated now, unlocking 80% margins with AI, which was the topic of the other one. Traditional agency model, the automated advantage, higher margins. So it covers exactly. You can see there's some small errors which you might have to adjust, but it's pretty amazing for being AI generated. Now that can then be pushed to, to Kit directly. It will uh, appear here in your drafts or whatever Beehive, etc. you use. But I hope this gave you some insight on how well it can do the copy. And, and in my experience, these are really 90% there. Of course, you always have to check and that's why we have constant human in the loop uh, to make sure everything's fine. But uh, it's really impressive how well it can uh, copy the tone of voice and the style of specific writers. Now, if we look at N8N, it might look like a pretty simple and straightforward automation system, uh, but most of the work in uh, automating these content systems or creative processes is really in the context engineering and the prompt engineering, whereas really where you spend 80% of the time in order for you to actually get those high quality outcomes. Now, let me uh, get you through the process we follow when trying uh, to automate these types of, of processes, these creative processes. Now here, I just made a quick diagram to show you the process we follow. Now, uh, in one of my previous videos, I covered the exact process we followed to do context engineering. So if you haven't yet, make sure to check it out, but I'll walk you through very quickly here. Basically, the first thing we do is we reverse engineer the, um, the process from the outcome. Now, in this case, the outcome uh, of the newsletter is, of course, newsletter generation, which is the last step in our process. Of course, I haven't added here the push to uh, newsletter tool, but that one is quite straightforward. So, and really the key thing when trying to automate these processes is defining for each of these steps in the process, exactly which context variables or pieces would be best to get the best possible outcome for each of these steps. Now, this is a little bit of, requires a little bit of experimentation. Sometimes it requires some testing in a tool like Promptmetheus, which I'll show you in a second. But for this one, we basically define that these are the best types of context to put in, in order for us to get the best possible newsletter out. So the first one is our newsletter strategy, which uh, just covers the ICP, the strategy for behind the newsletter, uh, the CTAs and uh, context around the business. Then we have a brand tone of voice, right? With the do's and don'ts, the style, the format, the tone of voice, which again, I showed you before. Then we have the newsletter personality, right? With the personal and professional background stories to add that into the newsletters. Then of course we have to pass in the insight or the idea. Uh, now this can be uh, an LNM generated insight or a, a user insight or an external source like a YouTube or a link or a blog link. That's why I've separated them. So basically the green ones 
I mean, these are context pieces that are generated by an LNM, and the blue ones are ones that are generated by the user. So it's a user input uh, variable, basically. So, and then the last one, of course, is newsletter references and examples. This, uh, we, we've experimented a lot. This got us the best outcomes. Then, of course, we have the system prompt that describes to the LNM how to use these different context variables in order to get to a great newsletter. And there is some experimentation in the system prompt too. Now, it's all, not always completely straightforward uh, which context variables you need. Um, and this requires a bit of experimentation. And that's where we use prompt Prometheus. Uh, so let me show you a quick example. So here we are in prompt Prometheus. Again, I walked it through it in my last video too, but I'll give you a quick overview. So here basically we have the system prompts, the ones here in orange, and here we have the data sets. And in the data sets, we can basically feed in uh, uh, context into the system prompt, right? So you can see that we have all the context variables that I, I showed you before. So this is the final system prompt for And we can easily test that by just turning context on and off. But we can also experiment between different formats of that context. So for example, if I go in the tonality report, I can also add in multiple variables here. And then I can test with which one, for example, it gets the best output. So I can put it here on seven or eight, and then I can generate it. And based on the generation, I can then check which one's better. So you're constantly A-B testing. And this is quite some work, but it's really what we've seen is necessary to get the best possible output from these LNM in these creative processes. Now, the next thing we we'll test is also um, the system prompt, where here you can also add in multiple system prompts and test between those, which ones work best. And then, of course, you can also experiment between different models. Right now, we've seen for these writing tasks, highly recommend Cloud 4.1 Opus. It's, uh, in my experience, for most of these tasks, the best. But you can see, I highly recommend playing around with Prometheus. Langfuse is another example of a good tool. You can do this in, but it really is necessary, in my experience, to get to that, to those good outcomes. And you will spend uh, quite a lot of time. We spent most of the time, actually, in these tools and planning out the process. Once we have the right prompts and the right pieces of context, putting it all together into an NADN system is really the, the easy part. Now, from here, we work basically backwards. Like, what do we need to get there, right? So the next step would be idea generation. Now, in this case, um, we only need two context pieces to get good ideas in our experience, which is the newsletter strategy and the newsletter personality. And, of course, a good system prompt to generate these ideas. Then we have uh, the brand tone of voice, right? Which, again, I showed you before. Now, in our experience, this is really important to get this, the, the LNM to really mimic that tone of voice. Just the references does a decent job, but this really hones it down even further. So in our experience for these content processes, having a brand tone of voice that's, you know, fed in to this last step really makes a big difference in the tone of voice. Now, in order to generate that, we of course need to feed it uh, newsletter references and the newsletter strategy. So it gets context around me and my business. And of course, a good system prompt. Uh, then we have before that a newsletter strategy uh, generation. Now this, again, we almost always do with th these types of processes because we always, in every single one of these steps, as you can see, we always pass in the newsletter strategy for the system to have a good overview of the ICP, the target audience, the company, and the person we're writing this for. Now, in this case, this would be the first step in our process. So all of these are going to be user inputs. And this is also by reverse engineering like this and defining the context pieces, how we can define what the user needs to fill out, what the user inputs are going to be, right? So you can see, of course, to generate the newsletter strategy report, we need a company overview, we need the ICP, and we need the uh, CTA, right? And then, of course, we can define what the user onboarding, user inputs need to be, right? Company overview, ICP, CTA, newsletter personality, newsletter references, insights and ideas and brand image examples. Now, I didn't add that step in here, of course, but uh, we need some context for that one too. So that's sort of the process we follow uh, to do this. Now, again, highly recommend checking out Prometheus. You can see here in the strategy, newsletter strategy, we also have multiple prompts we test. We test with all these different variables um, to get to the best outcomes. Now, again, if you want to learn more about this process, etc., make sure to check out my last video. Also, if you're interested in adopting a solution like this, maybe your newsletter agency or you provide these services to companies, uh, you can always book in a call with us uh, in the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. If you got any value out of it, I highly appreciate a like and a subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.